Hello mate and welcome. This is a rare opportunity to see me just basically my current workflow for creating renders for my game. So um, I haven't got my content library on screen. Uh, I know a few people are going to get butt hurt about that but I don't really care to be honest. It's, um, it's one of those things everyone wants to see what morphs and what content I'm using. For what reason I don't know there. Obviously, I'm hardly going to encourage people to copy my own work. But so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just browsing through my poses, trying to decide what pose I'm going to have Sarah in for this shot. This is going to be one of the background images. So when the player walks into the room, if Sarah is in the room on her own at this particular time of day, then this is the image that will be shown on the background when they're in the room. So obviously I need to adjust the uh, lighting settings to make it appropriate for the time of day and also make it different from the last image. For example, if Sarah's in the apartment on her own all day, I don't want her to just be sitting on the couch in this pose for the entire day. I want her to be doing different things at different times of day. So this is essentially what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just picking what pose I want Sarah to be in. Um, I'm going to move her over to the desk because I think that's a more interesting uh, shot for this. Now, obviously context is important as well. Now at this stage of the game, Sarah is almost entirely blind. She's got glasses to stop her from having seizures, um, but they don't do an awful lot for her vision. So um, I can't have her doing anything like reading a book or watching TV because that would be utterly out of character. So just basically she's just sitting there chilling out. So I'm going to pick a pose that sort of reflects that. So that, you know, she's not going to be sitting there doing anything too dramatic. Just a pose that's different from the cross-legged pose she's sitting on on the sofa. And then once I've got that correct and I can pick an expression. Because these are custom characters, it's extremely unlikely that any out-of-the-box expressions actually fit their faces they always end up with kind of horse teeth when I, when I apply any of these um, expressions so I normally have to pick something very subtle and then if I want anything more dramatic I have to kind of create it myself using the power pose tools that are in uh, Das Studio I'm at the stage now with Das Studio where I no longer I know enough to do, to do what I need to do with what's left of my game. Once I finish Deep, I will be gladly leaving Das Studio behind. Um, I know a lot of people will be thinking, well, you, you've spent loads of money on content, and that's true, but it is such an unbearably buggy and unintuitive piece of software that I will be more than happy to put all of that stuff to us to side and just you know move on to something else so if I ever do do another 3d CG visual novel I'll be doing it using iClone and character creator because a the results are more realistic b they're better for animation and c they are much better pieces of software that are optimized um, so yeah and that's not just me saying that because Reillusion have got me doing um, different jobs for them and whatnot because they you know I'm doing a lot of freelance bits and pieces but it's just better software and the company that appreciates the benefits of good customer service rather than just ignoring their customers anyway that's enough ranting about Das Studio so as you can see I'm just tweaking the pose now getting things in the right place so that it looks natural I know that from the angle I'm probably going to be taking this picture it maybe doesn't matter so much if her foot's clipping slightly but I think all of these subtle little differences that you can fix in before you start the render button make all the difference. I'd rather not have to fix anything that I could have done in Das Studio. Just like photography, you want to get as good as you can in camera and then minimize the amount of work you have to do in post. Now that my post, because of, I use Photoshop so con so all, you know so regularly. The, Post-production doesn't take me a great deal of time, but even so, I don't want to have to fix things 
that don't need to be fixed if I can remedy them by moving a limb a couple of millimeters or whatever. And again, because it's a custom character, quite often the poses need fixing anyway, because they don't, you know, the limbs are never quite in the right place. There's always a bit of clipping that goes on. There we go. So I'm reasonably happy with that pose. So now I've just got to pick a camera angle that I like and try different expressions out, basically. Get something that suits her. Doesn't look too ridiculous. Which is always going to be challenging, as I say, with custom characters. And again, she's not going to be sat there with a big grin on her face because she's essentially on her own chilling out. It's going to be a fairly vacant expression, but I don't want it to be that studio default vacant expression because that irks me. You know, you, just a tiny little bit of subtle change in the facial positioning can bring the character to life. As you can see, the first one we pick is kind of horse teeth. Not really what we're looking for. So I undo that and I go for another one. Again, just searching through the content library, picking out of a uh, an expression, making sure everything's zeroed before I pick a new expression, and just in case the an old pose is interfering with a new one. Because so many expressions, particularly on Genesis 8.1, have sliders for morphs and uh, m m joint positions. If your new pose only changes one of those things, the other will remain from the previous pose, which can end up with some really weird ass looking expressions. So make sure you zero the sliders and zero the joint positions. I'm not saying that um, having poses that are a combination of the two is bad, but there are actually out there a couple of pose packs that have these poses that include sliders for morphs and joint positions, but don't actually have a zero. You can't zero them within the pack. You have to go to another pack to find a zero, which is quite irritating because it's just—it's not hard. It's not—it's not rocket surgery to put a zero pose in your pack. So we go. I'm going to go with a really subtle expression that's, you know, kind of indecipherable from the default Das Studio from a distance, but I know it's different. Cool, so now it's just a case of choosing a decent camera angle to shoot from. Um, this is always a bit of fun, a bit experimenting. Do I want to have more of the room in the shot? Do I want to have less of the room in the shot? At this stage of the game, the player knows very well what the, home, the motel room looks like because Sarah spends the first quite long portion of the game unconscious on the bed. So at this point, she's awake. The player's been playing for quite a while at this point, so I don't really need it to be a wide establishing shot. I can just have Sarah sitting at the desk if I want to. And I do have a little look at this and just see how it looks. But compositionally, this isn't very good anyway. This is this kind of sucks from a composition point of view. So I'm going to try zooming in and see what happens really. I'm just fixing the render settings because at the moment my lighting is set for the morning preset. I'm just changing that to the daytime. As you can see I've got my morning, afternoon, evening and daytime colours there. And now we'll just see how this looks in uh, the DAS Studio preview IRA render mode, whatever you want to call it. IRA preview and we'll just see how it looks if the lighting is bright, but I've got a feeling it's going to be way too dark. So yeah, it takes a moment just to uh, do all the calculations and then yeah, the frustrating thing is because I've got that um, light strip under the desk, which I'm not going to get rid of because it's, you know, it's there. Uh, it does kind of draw the eye away from the character, so I'm thinking that rotating the camera angle round and shooting in an angle that I can't see that strip is 
probably going to be beneficial for this shot because it's making the rest of the shot look way too dark which is obviously not what we want so i think i'm yeah i'm gonna come around shoot from a much shallower angle so that you can't see under the desk you can still see the light coming out from under the desk and hitting her but it's just way too much for this particular shot i'm just going to play with some camera settings get things focused where i want them to be focused and then swing back around So I think this is the angle that I'm going to settle with. I'm going to get the composition looking right. camera focused on the right thing and then it's basically get it rendering So I'm basically ready to render at this point, so um, we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to speed up the video for the rendering portion, because nobody wants to sit there and watch me render, watch a, the, the IRA render screen for 20 minutes. So I'll speed it up just to so like a minute long, and then go into the post work. Okay, so time to start on the post work now. So I'm going to uh, apply a couple of actions that I've already um, created. These are the standard actions that I perform on every image in this game. Just to make things look a little bit more photorealistic. Now I'm just going to focus on the light from the window, add a little bit more brightness to that. Maybe add a little bit of a flare to it.
So I'm going to uh, just let this run um, for this point. And um, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye. <laughs>